What's up guys, CB Mota here, back with another video. When it comes to tech, well, chances are you're watching this video, you are also to the same person that people come to us to fix their computers. But let's face it, computers are really complex. They're little boxes with a whole bunch of stuff in there, software, hardware, and all that kind of stuff. How do you go about actually fixing it and finding out what is really wrong with it? Because in a lot of cases, people just dump a box on you and say, fix it and it's pretty hard to figure out where to start. Well, thankfully for this video anyway, my full-time job is to go ahead and fix computers, albeit at more of a server and enterprise level, but today we're going to be taking a look at some simple steps that you can follow to figure out what is wrong with a computer and get the problem well worked out in just a matter of minutes. So let's jump right in with the first thing that I always do when it comes to trying to fix a computer and that is to take everything that is told to you with a grain of salt. Don't get me wrong, it's really important to get the end user or whoever actually owns the thing to explain to you what's wrong in their words and if they can actually show you what's wrong but a lot of the time they're not the most tech savvy person and really have no idea, hence why they're coming to you. If they had an idea, they would probably fix it themselves. So take everything that is said to you with a grain of salt. A lot of the time people come to me saying, oh, the hard drive's broken or the CPU is wearing out when 99.99% .99 of the time, that's really not the case. If I had a dollar for every time someone came to me saying, oh, my hard drive's broken, I could probably upgrade every one of those computers to an SSD and still have thousands of dollars to give away in SSDs to you guys. So uh, take what they say with a grain of salt, but it's still important to listen to what they say because if you're not listening, they might get a little bit upset. But um, definitely take it with a grain of salt and see if you can replicate it yourself and work out for yourself what is going on then. So. Once we've gone ahead and had a chat with the person and sort of got them to try and show you what's going on, the next thing that I like to work out is whether it's a software or hardware fault. This is really easy to go ahead and do it also too is a great sort of first step to do because once you work out whether it's software or hardware, it's really easy then to go ahead and find a fix. If you're sort of running around between software and hardware and not really working out between the two, I've seen it time and time again when hours and hours and hours have been wasted because you try and think it's one thing and then all of a sudden it's the other. Now, sometimes this is unavoidable, but working out whether it's software or hardware is a great first step as well. Now, in some cases it can be super obvious that it's a hardware issue like, oh, I don't know, the screen doesn't turn on, might also to be a hardware problem there. However, sometimes it can be a little bit more challenging to work out. So for today's example, I have, well, a laptop that's come to me and the user has said, it's broken, can you fix it? Well, I can fix it, I just need to work out where it's at. So for this video, we're gonna power it on and we can see this screen right here, which shows no bootable devices found, which is kind of an obvious pointer over to a hardware issue. Now there are certain things that look like software that are actually turns out to be hardware. For instance, if a computer is crashing and blue screening for instance on the Windows side, it may be because of RAM and not always because of a software problem. Again, on the flip side, it could just be a software problem and not anything to do with hardware. So working out where it is, is an interesting thing. Now in our example right here that we're gonna be looking at today, this points directly to a dead drive. So we can make the assumption that it's probably not going to be a software problem. But in the tech PC repair world, you can't just make assumptions. They're just not good enough, so we do need to confirm this. So once I've sort of started to make an idea of what I think might the issue be, again, whether it be software or hardware, we then need to go ahead and do an inventory on the system, both a physical inventory and also to a software-based inventory. Now you're thinking, why do I need to make an inventory of the computer? Because it is the quickest way to work out whether a part has died or whether it might be something else. Else. So for this example right here, I'll either look inside the computer or just look up the specifications. And for this example, we've got things like a two and a half inch drive, an M.2 drive, the RAM, the CPU, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna note down what the actual system specs are. Up to this point, I can go ahead and also to jump into either the Windows operating system, if you can get into it, or jump into the BIOS or whatever equivalent you may have and do the same inventory over on the software side. So go through the different stages of the BIOS, find all the hardware that matches up with, well, the hardware that you just counted and see if there's any changes. 
For instance, if you're thinking you may have a dead drive, well, count the actual physical drive, then go in the BIOS and see if it even shows up. And this is where things can get yourself a little bit tripped up because in our example right here, we see, well, bang, there are all our drives. The SSD shows up and the hard drive, which in this case might actually point to a failed Windows install. Maybe someone's gone ahead and deleted a folder, <laughs> deleted system 32, or there's something else that might be an issue, uh, it might actually start to point over to being a software issue. And this is again coming back to that thing we talked about earlier, where you might think it's one thing, get really close to it, and all of a sudden it might just be something completely different. So for us, we can see that the drive initializes and shows up here, and this is where we need to take our investigation a little bit further. Now at this stage, if you've found that, oh, the GPU's not showing up, the CPU's got something that's not quite right here, or the RAM's not showing up correctly, well then you can go ahead and diagnose down there but if you're in the same situation as we are here where all the hardware shows up we can start digging into it maybe being a software problem and this is where Linux comes to save the day now for me I don't really run Linux on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm not sort of super into Linux but it is the most useful tool for finding out whether something is wrong with an operating system because you can boot up Linux on just about anything and it runs off like a little USB drive so for example right here I'm gonna plug in Linux and in our case I did find that yes the system was able to boot fine so it rules out other hardware issues however once I got into Linux I also too found that the C drive just didn't show up I could find that it initialized but it wouldn't actually show the C drive itself I couldn't format it I couldn't find it it was for all intents and purposes dead however it did show up in our inventory on the software side and once I found this piece of information I could go back to it being a hardware problem so in our case I switched out the SSD boom I was able to boot into a Windows install ruled out any other problems and found that it was just the M.2 SSD that had failed not the most common thing to fail on a computer but at the same time it was pretty simple right here and well all I need to do, chuck in a new SSD and install Windows and it was all good to go. But for those of you out there who are experiencing a little bit more of a software issue, this is where it can get really, really tricky, but at the same time, super easy to go ahead and fix. Because you're able to get into Windows, you can see everything and you can actually execute some stuff with that operating system, you can start to track down what the software issue might be. Now, software is a really broad topic and I could make hundreds of videos on how to troubleshoot different pieces of software, but there are some sort of uh, go-to things that you can go ahead and do. For instance, clearing things like caches and save files is a great place to start. Finding their preferences and seeing if you can reset them to default or just a simple uninstall and reinstall can be a great way to fix a number of software issues. In some cases, it might be a quick fix and in other cases, it might take you a very long time. But uh, software, the best friend for you is definitely doing some Google searches and trying to extract as much information out of the errors you are getting. Whether it's a certain application won't open or some error is popping up on the screen, just simply Googling it can be a simple way because I guarantee if you've had the problem, hundreds if not thousands of other people have also do had a very similar if not the exact same problems. And really, it's that simple. We can identify whether it's a hardware or software issue, then apply an appropriate fix. Now hardware, yes, not everyone's gonna have SSDs lying around or CPUs lying around or GPUs lying around, so your local PC repair store could be your best friend, although they may not be super happy for you just coming in and fixing your own computer in their store, they might eh, either way, but point being, once you figure out which way you need to go, it's a really simple process. PCs can be rather complex, but when you break it down to a certain amount of steps and you can work out what the entire thing that you need to do is and then break up those steps, it is a really easy way to fix computers and it sort of can come down to a few simple steps. Number one, listen to what the user is reporting, then ignore most of what they're actually reporting and test it for yourself. Number two, well, go ahead and find out whether it's a software or hardware issue. Doing a physical inventory by looking at the specs of your computer or just physically opening it up and checking it out. Then also to a software inventory and then cross-reference it to see what might be missing. Whether you look through device manager or a readout in a BIOS, it is a fast way to flag dead components. Then at this point, you can either go down the hardware route or the software route, and either one has a lot of Google searching that needs to be done to find the exact right answer. And it's really that simple. 
figure out what's wrong and then repair it. It is not the most complex thing. But also keep in mind, Google again is a really great resource. If you've had a single problem, chances are a lot of other people have had that exact same problem with very similar setups. So there's always someone out there who's ready to help. If you're not finding the actual answer, another great resource is YouTube videos like this one. Leave a comment. There's a lot of people out there who love fixing computers, myself one of them, um, who love to have a chat about them and would be more than happy to help you or jumping on forums. There are a lot of great forums out there to go ahead and give you a hand with your PC repair. Sadly though, there's not one magic button to fix the software and there's not one magic part to replace when it comes to fixing hardware, but all in all, these simple steps should get you along the way quite quickly. But guys, let me know some of your weird troubleshooting things that you found out down in that comment sections or if you are having problems with the computer, let me know down below. I'd love to give you guys a hand with that. I can't say that I know how to fix every single thing like that, but I'll be more than happy to give you some pointers and some help right there. Guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.